we were at Vincent Arario Family Wines. Napa Valley is known for making amazing wines. The winery that I went to is the best winery in America. I talked to Matt. He was the winemaker. He took me behind the scenes to show me how they make wine. Wine comes from grapes, but how do they make it? Welcome, Madison. I hear you're here to learn a little bit about science and winemaking. Yeah? Well, you like science? Yeah. Uh, we do a lot of science here. I think you, you would really appreciate what we do here. Can I take you back to the barrel room to show you what we do? Okay, let's go this way. Okay, so what we're going to do with this barrel here is we're going to pump the, the wine. This is the wine inside. We're going to pump it up into the tanks. And then we have a big truck that comes to the winery and it puts the wine in the bottle for us. It's pretty impressive. And it, it can go do, it can fill 100 bottles a minute. It's pretty fast. So uh, that'll happen this summer. So this wine is sitting in this barrel. It's been in this barrel for two years. And then after two years, it goes in the bottle. And then, then we start serving it to people like your dad and mom. Wine making is a very long process. And they taste the wine, they like the wine, they buy the wine. <laughs> but this is all made out of the grapes. So this wine here is Cabernet Sauvignon. So see this is Cab, C-A-B. That's a short for Cabernet. Right here it says G-W. This is the name of the ranch it came off of, Greenwood. So it stands for G-W, G Greenwood Ranch. So this ranch right here is where you're standing on. So these grapes, are just on the other side of this creek. And then the number five means it's from block number five. So we have four different, or four other blocks of Cabernet on the Greenwood Ranch. So this is block number five. So when we pick the grapes, we pick them in a small little section and we make them into wine and then we'll blend them back together with other, other grapes. When you pick the grapes from the vines, do you know which uh, ones taste like which wine, like which ones have the right taste? Correct, yes. So, you know, the best way to know what grapes are growing out there, because when you go out there to pick these grapes, they're all red. So how do you know this is Cabernet and that's Merlot or Zinfandel? It's the leaves. So each type of grape has a different type of leaf. And that's how you know if it's Zinfandel or Cabernet. So that's how we know which ones are which when we're picking. But we also, when we're picking these grapes, we want to see what the sugar is. So we need enough sugar to make the wine. So if it doesn't have enough sugar, we can't pick, so we have to wait. So we wait for the sugars to get up, and that's when we pick, pick the grapes. Right now, they're, they're no, there's not even grapes out there. They're flowers. And the flowers turn into berries, and the berries grow, and they're, first they're green, and then they turn red. So that's, that's how they, the season. So right now, we oh, have- so if the grapes are red, then the wine is red. Correct. Yes, and and you know why they're you know why they're red? Because if you squeeze the juice of a berry, the juice is clear, so it looks kind of like water. But when you take the grapes and you leave the juice with the berries in the skin, inside the tank, the skin turns the juice red. So that's where the color comes. It's not the inside of the grape is clear, but the red is on the outside. There's a lot of science. We a lot of chemistry. So you have to learn things like about what pH, which is like the acid. So we got to figure out how much acid is inside the wine. Um, there's things called um, bricks, which is the sugar level. So we, we use a instrument called hydrometer, and that tells us how much sugar is in the wine. Because what we try to do here is we don't want any sugar left after we ferment the grapes. So we watch the sugar go down, and we use a little tool, and it bounces in the in the, the, the wine, and it has little numbers on it. It tells us how much sugar is in the wine. So we use that when we are doing our harvest to check the sugar of the, of the wine that's fermenting. So yeah, there's a lot of science, but a lot of it is learning to taste the wine, and if you like it, that's how we make the wine. You have to use your taste buds. I was with the winemaker, and together we were doing science experiments. Well, today we're filtering the wine. So what happens is, 
sometimes wine may have problems where bacteria or maybe bad things get into the wine and we want to protect the wine. So we use a filter to filter the wine through to catch the bad stuff. It's like a net. It catches any of the bad things that are in the wine so that the wine comes out clean. So that's what we're doing right now out there uh, at the moment. So we're cleaning up some wine just so we, we keep it safe. So we do that for all of our wines to keep them nice and safe. Because bacteria, you don't want bacteria. Bacteria are bad. <laughs> they make the wine taste bad. So we, we want to make good tasting wine. So we want to keep it clean. So that's why we do the filtering. So this is the filter. So they're telling you about what they're doing, about cleaning the wine. Yeah. So what happens is the wine goes in one hose, it goes through the machine, and it comes out the other hose. Why does all the wine go? It goes from one tank to the other. So if you look in here, we have um, we have one tank that was full and we emptied to one tank that was empty. He was taking nitrogen and pumping them into these oak barrels. And then this is what we use here to, to keep all the oxygen out of the tank. This is what they call nitrogen. And nitrogen helps protect the wine so it doesn't go bad. Because if you don't, if you have oxygen inside the wine, it turns brown. Just that's the reaction of wine. So it's they call it oxidation. So you don't want the wine to go brown. So in order to keep the, the brown, you either have to keep the wine full in the, in the, inside the barrel, or you gotta use nitrogen inside the tank to fill the space. So you don't have any oxygen touching the wine. Where are you gonna put these? These are gonna be filled up with a tank that he just filtered. Okay. So tomorrow, he's gonna take that, see that pump over there? Yeah. He's gonna take that pump, he's gonna take some hoses, and he's gonna stick the hose in there and fill them up. Each one. Until they're all full. Cool. And then, no, then we're going to stick these back inside and then we're going to take some more barrels and bring them out and then we'll take the wine out of the barrel, put them up in a tank, filter it, put it back into the barrel. Oh, it looks so fun to like just climb on them and then jump. Like leapfrog? Yeah. Yeah, no, and my kids, my boys like to do that when they come here. They like to play leapfrog on the barrel. <laughs> we want to keep these, these uh, little, uh, they call them bungs. We want to keep those inside the barrel. We don't want any air inside here because that makes the wine go bad. So that's why we have these little things here that keep the air from going inside the barrel. I like how it's rubber. It is rubber. It's actually called silicone. But yeah, it's just like rubber. Just like rubber. I asked Matt if making wine was a science or an art. Is wine making an art or a science? I think it's both. It's art in terms of how you express the, the wine, in terms of how you, the flavors, how you, what you're looking for, but it's also the science to make sure that it's, it's at the right numbers. So it's a, basically a mix of both, science and art. We, we are able to make our wines every year the best we can make them. So some year, every year they're gonna taste different, and that's the art. Some wineries have to make the wine taste the same every year, so they use the science. But we're fortunate that we get to use both. Mom and Dad tasted Matt's wine and they loved it. Okay, Madison, we'll, we'll see you hopefully soon at the winery. Can you say goodbye?